Hey, this is Judah Mantel for Seamforge Studio, and in this video I'm going to go over the actual Unity workflow in a HDRP project. Now, there was a previous video that goes over the technical implementation of using the actual Seamforge SDK, but this video is going to be a little more creative and shows it off in the context of a real scene. We're going to use two scenes for this example. The first is just the HDRP demo scene here. It's pretty nice, it has some really nice lighting, shows off the reflections, the volumetric fog and everything like that really nicely. Then we're going to go to a little more interesting scene that you'll see later on. So if you're familiar with the Unity SDK, or if you're not familiar, I recommend watching the tutorial video I made previously. And certainly make sure you have the SDK installed before you actually begin the streaming setup, because otherwise it's not going to work. So here I have this scene, and in it I have this video surface object. This is set up exactly the way you need to, with a parent object, and then the quad underneath it. This is what our footage is going to be projected onto. This is going to act as our actual 3D object that our character, our composited character, is going to be. And you can see in the scene view, you know, it looks very nice. Blends in well with the lighting, of course, because it's just a regular unlit material. So the first thing we're going to do is actually add the SceneForge server component. And we're going to set the target render to be our quad here. And because it's HDRP, it's actually going to be base color map because that's the property that HDRP material targets. And once we have that set up, we have to go into SceneForge server. Now I have this running in the background with just this chroma key footage of our guy here walking left and right in the frame and talking to someone. So I actually already have a key set up. You can see the background is removed. You can see the alpha mat is really nice and sharp around the edges. It has some despill around his face. And that's about that. So what we want to do is go to either NDI or Spout. I'll use NDI for now. Select a server name and then just click Start Server. So now that's running in the background. So all I have to do now is inside Unity, go to NDI, select my input source, and once it loads up, you'll see I'll actually be able to view it inside Unity. Now because I just put in a regular quad, the material obviously is not set up correctly. So I'm going to add the right material. This is just included with the server SDK. I'm going to drag that on. And this material is just a standard lit material, but with alpha clipping enabled. So now it removes the alpha area. I can also adjust the metallicness and smoothness to get a better blend in the scene. I think something like this with a higher smoothness actually looks a little bit better. And you can see it takes all lighting from the scene. It casts a nice shadow. And you'll even get proper reflections when you move around the scene. So I'm going to really quickly just click play so our footage is moving. And you can see that once we have the player set up, we actually get a really nice composite of our character in the scene. Like so. Now this is just one example. And you can see it looks really good in the scene. We have a very nice environment. But now let's transition to something a little more interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and switch the scene now. So here I have this beautiful environment. This is from the Asset Store. I'm going to leave a link to the asset in the description of the video. And you can see we have this really nice cutscene of the camera zooming in on this Chinese village that has this arch over here. And you can see I already set up the actual video surface where I want it to be, like so. So now we have to set up the footage. So I have seen Forge server open with this footage right here. And I like this footage because it shows a wide range of brightnesses in our image with all one green color. So if I go to my final output, we actually have a nice key already. And part of the way this works is that I have a garbage mat set up to remove the outside area that we don't want over here. So I'm going to go ahead and just refine that. And you can see as I move the camera around or the video around, it all stays within our mask. And that's how we have this nice, perfect, clean mat here. I'm going to go ahead and refine some of that. And when we're ready, we can jump back into Unity. So I'm going to, before I do that, I'm going to turn on body tracking. So if I go to 3D view and I click play, you'll see that she actually is hovering in the middle of the air. That's because she's walking towards the camera, which results in a change in scale. So to fix that, we can go to tracking mode, 3D track, and set the locomotion scale to something small. So now as she moves around the scene, it turns that into actual 3D motion between objects. 
So under NDI, I'm going to make sure it's set to body under set and tracking. Enable the server. Now in Unity, all I have to do is go to my video surface, select body 3D, make sure our quad is selected. And now if I click play, after selecting the right input source, of course, we actually have our footage inside of Unity. So I'm going to click play to make sure the tracking will actually initialize. And once that's done, I can scrub through the timeline to actually see our footage in our scene. So you can see as I scrub through the timeline, we get to zoom in on our character and see her walking around this scene like so. And because we have the tracking enabled, as you can see here, if I show off the actual object, you can see it actually is walking through 3D space. The speed is a little off because it's catching up for mixed frames while I'm recording, but you can see it working really well. And because it is a lit material, I can adjust the lighting around her face. So as the camera zooms in, we can get some really cool shots, it's a little too close, of our character walking around. Of course, this is looped footage, so you can see it kind of jumps back to the original position before. But for this quick example, it looks really great. And I'm sure you can imagine with a live camera, a webcam input, another NDI source, or a capture card, you can do some really amazing things using body tracking, a high definition render engine like the HDRP, and only a very low budget equipment with just a green screen. And it'll look really great if you spend time on it. And so that is an overview of the Unity SDK in practice. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment down below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Or you can email me directly at judah at sceneforge.app. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.